They may be boring, they may often be ugly, but if you're getting into retro computing, you're going to need to think about them whether you like it or not. We need to talk about monitors. So I've brought you down here to my basement slash retro computer room in order to talk about what I think has got to be a pretty common problem for those running older computers. And that's what to do about the display. All of these computers used different standards for video output. They're not all re really very compatible and uh, monitors typically only had one or two inputs at most. So even if you get a matching monitor with a particular computer, it's not likely to work with another computer. So if you do pick up more than one or two old computers, you could end up with a whole bunch of monitors to go with them. I didn't want that in my house. I don't like big, heavy CRT monitors. I've actually had really bad luck with one exploding on me. Um, you know, these things are just kind of bad news when they get too old and worn out. So uh, I wanted to keep the number of monitors that I had to a minimum and uh, I actually asked about this on atariage.com, got some great advice there. This video would not be possible without you guys on that site, so thanks a lot for that. But I wanted to talk in this video about some of these computers, their video outputs, and also some of the solutions to this problem. So to start with, I think I'll just run through the computers that I have hooked up right now and what I'm doing for each one of them as far as the display goes. So first of all, as you can see over here on the far side, I've got my Apple II GS. This is the system that I grew up with as a kid, and uh, it came actually with the matching monitor. Now, if you do get a matching monitor with a computer, I, I do recommend using it. They're probably going to be the easiest to set up, and they're probably going to look the best, too. Um, not all computers, though, come with matching monitors. For example, moving down here, this is my Commodore 64, which is a, a new addition to my... Uh, my computing family here. Um, I'm familiar with this computer from when I was a kid. I used, I used them a lot, but I didn't own one until recently. And these don't really have specifically matching monitors, although Commodore did make several monitors that you could use with it and that they intended you to use with it. Um, but again, I didn't want to get a whole bunch of different monitors because again, here behind it, my Atari 800XL. This, uh, just like the Commodore 64, supports both composite and S-video output. So I needed a monitor I knew that would support both of those standards. But also moving down here, this is a Tandy 1000 RL HD. This is an early IBM compatible computer from uh, Tandy Radio Shack. And uh, it's actually more of a PC Junior compatible, but uh, around the time of the RL, they had moved to be making their 1000 series more sort of big daddy PC compatible. So um, it does support most IBM PC standards, and the video output that it has is CGA. I had actually assumed there was some backward compatibility between VGA and CGA. It's been a long time since I used any of these things. And so when I first tried to hook this computer up, I assumed I could just take the VGA monitor I have up in my attic, hook it up, and it would work. But no, you need a CGA monitor. Now, CGA monitors in general are not that easy to find. If you go on eBay and search for CGA monitor, you're going to find a few real results, but a lot of them are going to be these newfangled sort of LCD monitors that... Uh, supposedly support all different standards. I haven't actually tried one of these. Some of them are too expensive and they, they look kind of dodgy to me. I'm, I, I'd rather have a real CGA monitor. Now there are some famous ones, for example, the IBM 5153, which is one of the monitors that you could get with the original IBM PC. Um, and Tandy made a few and uh, you know, there are a few others that you can find if you look, but again, they're, they're not that common anymore. And uh, most of them only support CGA. It's a very rare thing to find a monitor that supports CGA, which is actually digital RGB, analog RGB for any other computers that, that I might get that support that, as well as composite and as video. There's only really a couple of options for you out there. The first option is a Commodore 1084. This is a picture of an Amiga that I once owned. You can see how yellow it is, and that's one of the reasons that I sold it. 
I also just have no personal connection to the Amiga. I couldn't even really figure out how to get it to work. Anyway, I do regret selling the monitor, which I didn't realize at the time is one of the most versatile consumer monitors ever made. It has analog RGB, digital RGB, composite, and S-video inputs. It'll pretty much display any computer made in the 1980s. This is probably the best option in a single monitor. The problem is they are not cheap these days. People know what they are and they seek them out. You're going to have a hard time finding one in good condition for less than 200 bucks. Sometimes it's actually easier to find good deals on them with an Amiga. Uh, if you have any interest in buying an Amiga, look for one with a 1084. You might get a good deal. The other thing to be aware of with the 1084 is that not all of them were created equal. They don't all have the same inputs. I'm going to put a link down in the description to a great site that lists all the different 1084 variants and in fact all the different Commodore monitors in general so you can see which ones have the right inputs. What you want to look for is analog RGB, digital RGB, NTSC composite, and NTSC separates. Now another good option is right here and that's the Magnavox RGB Monitor 40. This should look very similar to you to the Commodore 1084 that I just showed you and that's because it is the same casing. Uh, Philips Magnavox made a lot of the Commodore 1084 monitors. Mm -hmm. By the way, you'll have to excuse me for not actually playing this game while I show it to you. I can't play and talk at the same time, but I just wanted to show you this working. But uh, anyway, this monitor, uh, it's got a lot of the same features as the Commodore 1084, but it is missing S-Video. I decided I could live without that. Composite to me looks great. This is actually now uh, my Commodore 64 running via composite and I don't think that S-Video would look any better than this to be honest. Um, otherwise this monitor does have uh, analog RGB for any computers I get in the future that support that as well as digital RGB, aka CGA. You saw the computer, uh, the Tandy 1000, running on this monitor earlier through CGA. And uh, it, uh, yeah, it supports those three standards, composite, uh, analog, and digital RGB, which will cover probably 95% of all of the computers released in the 1980s. ti 99 any of the other Atari computers, including the ST, the XE, uh, the Amiga, I mean, I really just can't think of a computer that you wouldn't be able to use with this monitor. There, there aren't any that I know of that only support S-Video or only support RF, although I'm sure somebody now will point out one or two in the comments. Now these Magnavox monitors actually came with cables for both the Atari 8-bit line and Commodore 64 as well as the IBM PC. You're probably not going to get so lucky as to find one of these brand new in the box, so whether you get one of these or a Commodore 1084, you're probably going to need to budget in a few extra bucks for some cables. Now, luckily for me and maybe for some of you, the Atari XL line as well as the C64 both use the same video connector for their output, and that's this 5-pin DIN connector here, and that just goes to standard RCA plugs on the other end. For CGA, most computers output using this 9-pin DE9 connector, but Commodore 1084 monitors, at least most of them, as well as these Magnavox monitors, use a DIN connector, which is an older style. It's not that hard to find these cables. In fact, I'll put a link to a website where I got mine down in the description. It was only about $10. For analog RGB, you're kind of on your own. I don't have any analog RGB computers right now to use this monitor with. And the cables may be different depending on the computer, but again, they shouldn't be too hard to find. Now, you probably see a pretty bad moire effect on the camera there. That's, that's not visible in real life, but I'm kind of... Let me just move this a little bit and see if I can change that. I'm just... I'm trying to show you... Uh, I'm trying to show you how this looks as a 40-column monitor. There is also an 80-column version of this monitor. And the only real difference is the 80-column version has higher resolution. This monitor, I think, looks perfect on something like a Commodore 64 or Atari XL. Um, my Atari, actually, right now is, is down for the count. I'm waiting on a new power supply, or I would show you that hooked up as well. This is the C64 uh, blue screen. But uh, I think this looks like these 8-bit uh, systems are supposed to look. It looks, it looks great. It looks nice and uh, tight and 
sharp and everything is perfect. Now switching over to CGA and trying to run a graphical environment, uh, things get a little kind of hard on the eyes for me. And this is when you might want to consider getting the 80 column version of this monitor instead. I have started with the computer off just so you can hear the amazing sound this computer makes when you turn it on. Uh, hopefully this does come through on the mic, but here I'm going to turn the computer on right now. It's just a great sound, but then you are left with this kind of annoying whine. Uh, Pretty soon it'll be booted into Deskmate here. It doesn't actually take very long at all. And there you go, that's that's Deskmate. That's uh, Tandy's early attempt at a graphical operating system. And I'm not gonna review the operating system itself. Generally it actually works pretty well, but uh, just as far as the monitor, it, it is a little chunky. You do see quite a lot of space in between the phosphors. It does get a little bit hard to look at sometimes. Um, but it's not really a big deal and, uh, you know, for things like games and other things like that, it's, it's still great. Um, you know, you're, you're probably not going to be running Windows on this monitor, so I wouldn't really worry about it. Um, for the most part, we're talking about 1980s graphics here, which were not very high res to begin with. Uh, the one thing is if you plan to get something like an Atari ST or Amiga and run them in high res mode, you might then want to have the 80 column version of this monitor, the RGB monitor 80. So that's basically it. I hope that I've helped some of you who might be having the same dilemma that I was having a month or two ago, which is what monitor to get for, you know, any or all of your retro computing systems. Um, it's really not complicated at all. Once you know what to look for, the only issue is there just aren't a lot of choices if you want to keep the cost down. You can, of course, spring for a modern monitor made specifically for this purpose, but you're going to miss out on, you know, the the sort of CRT look, um, which I think is kind of a cool part of the experience of running these old computers. I don't like to have a lot of CRTs in my house, but I do like to have one or two just to get that full experience. Or you can also spend a lot of money on a real high-end professional monitor which often had all of these same inputs, but you're still going to spend four to five hundred bucks on one of those. If you want to keep the price down at least under two hundred dollars for a Commodore 1084 or even under one hundred dollars for one of these Magnavox monitors, you know, that's the way to go. Those are probably your best options. The Magnavox RGB monitor 40 or 80 or the Commodore 1084. So that's basically it and I'll see you guys next time.